Hello and welcome to Investing Confidential. I'm going to talk today about uh, private credit. Some of you may have heard of this strategy, they call it. Uh, funds, you know, opportunities, everyone's talking about it. private credit basically is the, the hottest thing around right now. It's being shoved down your throat, which is means basically it's a bubble. Okay. So I'm going to talk a little about what private credit is. Uh, why that there's more money being raised for private credit than even private equity. I mean, this this is this is dwarfing equities, by the way, in terms of money raised, and why it's just another one of these Wall Street style bubbles that you should be running from, not running towards. Okay, so let's get into it. What's private credit? Very simple. Private credit is a way of an alternative lender. See, these are non-bank credit. But by the way, what's happening now is the banks are getting into this, but I'll go into that later. So you have alternative lenders, non-bank lenders. They could be you know, asset managers. They could be hedge funds. They could be you know, just companies that sprout up, call themselves alternative lenders like SoFi, et cetera. And what these guys do is they lend money to companies, to small companies, sometimes larger companies and individuals. Uh, and they package these things or sell them directly to funds. So years ago, when this first started, you know, hedge funds did private credit to, you know, risky companies and they kept it on their books, right? So you, re you, you did it, you did it, you kept it on your books. And that's the way everyone did it, private credit for a very long time. But obviously, uh, when rates went to zero, right, we saw rates going down, pandemic went to zero, all of a sudden, boom, you had an explosion. There was a demand for yields. But let's look, let's talk about what specifically some of these private credit opportunities are. So first, we have the most popular or the, the largest percentage of um, private credit, private credit portfolios is senior direct lending. This is basically non-banks lending directly to corporations, mostly middle to small private companies. These are not public companies, they're private companies. Okay, that's the biggest percentage. Then you've got what they call junior debt. Again, these, this is another name for high yield. Okay, this is unsecured uh, lending, right? Where you're, you know, you're just lending money and there's no, you know, no, there's nothing behind it. It's just okay. You're taking, you're doing some analysis, and you're saying, hey, you know, I'm going to lend money to these, to these, to these characters, right? And um, it's unsecured, as they say. So then you have mezzanine debt. Okay, this is typically from usually from some kind of transaction, M and A transaction, something where a company needs some 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 short-term debt before they have equity, they'll do some type of mezzanine financing. Boom, that's mezzanine debt. Then you've got distressed debt. This is stuff that's, this could be consumer as well. This is stuff that's already, you know, blown out. Uh, and uh, it's been it's been sold by the banks as distressed or, or it is distressed. And this is something that private credit guys go into. And then you have the probably the, one of the fastest growing parts, specialty finance. Another name for consumer credit, all right? Credit cards. This is stuff that's lumped together. So you're not buying, obviously, one person. You're buying a lump of, of, of credit from a bank. The banks are getting rid of the stuff, and these private credit guys are buying it. So why is there this demand for private credit? It's very simple. As I said, rates go to zero. Rates have been down for a very, very long time, up until, obviously, 2022. Uh, and even then, there's a huge demand. Like America, you know, in the U.S. is a massive demand for money money market funds. You know, five percent, six percent. They were trading at one time, and people are running in, right? And now you're seeing that five percent yield start to dip, four and three quarters. And now people are panicking. They want they want higher yields. They don't want to buy stocks anymore. They're realizing that stocks are a bubble. So it's like, okay, let's go into these private credit funds. Okay, and this is where the demand is coming from. Individuals, this used to be an institutional product. Now it's become an overwhelming individual 
uh, product. And this is why it's dangerous. Okay, so look at the and, and this is what's being sold returns, right? Remember, they always say don't buy things on past returns, but nobody listens. Nobody listens. So private credit has had incredible returns, all right, relative to any type of benchmark. It's outpaced um, S&P 500. It's outpaced all equities, et cetera. Uh, you know, it's obviously private equity is there as, as, as the number one, but private credit is growing fast and relative to, again, volatility and relative to risk, it's even a better being sold as a better alternative than even private equity because it's, it's it's a little bit, I mean, they're both illiquid, but private credit supposedly is a little bit more liquid than private equity. All right. That's that's how it's being sold. Uh, so, so what's happening? I mean, look what's happening. Uh, the amount of money, this is basically the amount of money being raised for uh, by funds investing in private credit has absolutely positively exploded. Okay. I mean, it's not even close. I mean, private equity, as you saw, has a little better returns over time. But today, money is just exploding. Again, individuals, right? Most individuals have a small percentage of their funds in private equity. Um, it's, it's still an institutional game. But now, and I'll show you who is, people are piling into uh, private credit, right? Private debt, private credit. What do you want to call it? So, this is a red flag. Okay, it's being sold by all the brokers. You may have some. I don't know, but this is a red flag, folks. It, 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 it's it's these are illiquid, very very risky instruments being sold as a yield alternative to a money market fund. Believe it or not. So, let's talk about why. This is risky and, and what's happening. First, we look at the unemployment rate. Okay. Despite your hearing from the White House and the, the Wall Street, how the economy's good and this and that, they're, they, the reason they're clamoring for a rate cut is because of this. The unemployment rate is rising fast. We are now above pre COVID levels. Okay. And rising fast, much faster than even the numbers are telling us because the numbers, as I showed, look, the numbers are all fake. They're all false. I've showed you that a million times. I'm not going to get into it. But unemployment rate, the real unemployment rate is rising fast. Okay. What happens when that happens? What happens when that occurs? Obviously, that's showing one thing. Businesses are having some problems, right? Nobody's hiring. This supposed three jobs for every person was a lot of crap anyway. Um, but look, uh, you know, you've got a problem here because, as I mentioned, the biggest, the most growing percentage of these private credit portfolios was basically consumer loans. And now you have, you know, big delinquency. OK. And, and by the way, we're going to see this rise dramatically. The reason you're seeing 2008 is because they lump mortgages in there. We don't. This is pure consumer credit. This is much worse then we've been the, the financial crisis. Financial crisis was all mortgages. This is now all consumer loans. Okay, it's a big problem. It's a big problem for private credit because they're loaded up on this stuff, and they haven't started taking hits yet. Okay, so what is the result? And also the result again. Another problem is that you know consumers are defaulting. Consumers are not borrowing anymore. Okay, and and you know it's the, the the demand is coming down because people cannot. The economy is so bad, people don't want to borrow. Okay, another reason you're going to have problems with private credit. Okay, because this is inevitable, and it's leaking into the corporate bond market. The problems in private credit, the problems with the economy. I mean, look look at this. Uh, chart here where we're talking about the bubble so you've got you know private credit everyone's chasing yield and now you're seeing the the people just again private credit funds can do anything they want right because when they're when when you have a institutional fund that's one thing but now you have these private credit funds what are they doing they're buying bonds corporate bonds 
risky bonds, junk bonds. That's what they're buying. Massive appetite for junk bonds. And so you're, you're buying a private credit fund. What are you getting? You're just getting junk. And so as you can see, demand has exploded for these bonds, okay? And it's, 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 it's filtering everywhere. But the real stuff, the real, the real issues that you have to be worried about are, are, are now. And, and, and this is something that I want to bring up to you here. Here's a chart. Of CL CLOs are collateralized loan obligations. These are the toxic garbage, right? That caused the great financial crisis. CLOs. So, bake, like, let's take a step back. So, what happened during right before the crisis, the led up to the crisis? You had, you know, these collateralized mortgage obligations, collateralized loan obligation. All of these obligations, all of these these, these syndicate, they, they would take a bunch of loans, send a game together, get S&P to stamp triple, triple A because they're diversified and sell them to the public, sell them to pension funds, wherever. That caused a massive demand for loans. So what happened? The bank said, okay, we don't have any risk. We're just going to you know, take these things, give them to and, and get them off our books. Well, eventually they kept them on the books. But the realization is, as you can see here, uh collateralized loan obligations was, was 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 a dead market for many many years but it has exploded absolutely exploded this is a result of this private credit and this is a bubble a classic bubble we're going nobody remembers the great financial crisis I'm just buying these things you may you may in these are etfs I mean, imagine what's in the stuff that is not marked to market. I mean, this is a this is a nightmare. Okay, a real nightmare. And you know, again, to show you what 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 just how thing how bad things are today and how how risky things are. I mean, here you go. So you look at this. This this is a chart here. You've got on the left side, debt EBITDA. On the bottom, debt to assets. Okay, you focus on the debt to EBITDA because that's EBITDA is basically cash flow, right? Not earnings, but cash flow, and you want to make sure that your debt to EBITDA is somewhere around three, three and a half. Okay, that's for public companies. That's acceptable. You you obviously want less, right? But that's that's acceptable. So. You go, you go up the curve and you see high yield bonds, so the, the riskiest bonds you could imagine, trade at around four times debt to EBITDA. Your average private credit portfolio is almost five times. I mean, these are the risky of the risk. Okay, there, there's no way to sugarcoat it here, folks. You're, these private credit funds are being loaded with garbage, absolute garbage. And talk about, you know, valuation. Okay, how 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 we look at how institutions look at these things. I mean, this stuff is beyond overpriced. Okay, beyond overpriced. Uh, as you can see here, I mean, it is, I mean, it's off the charts, off the charts. So you want obviously higher yields. You don't want lower yields. So the worst thing you want is low, low yields. And tighter spreads as opposed to high high yields and wider spreads. The spread is always versus treasury, right? So what hap what's happening with private credit? There's so much demand for this garbage that people are the, the demand, the buying is driving down the yields and making the spread tighter versus treasuries. That makes this incredibly risky. Incredibly risky. And finally, as risky as it is. This is this is a this is a screenshot from Franklin Templeton, one of the big. So it's 
Black, it's Black, Black Rock, it's Franklin Temple, all your mutual guys, Morgan Stanley, Goldman Sachs. This is what you're, this is what they're selling. Okay, the power of private credit. The differentiated approach to potentially enhance fixed income returns by investing in less liquid, more complex areas of the less liquid, more complex. What that tells you is there's no liquidity and a tremendous risk. Tremendous risk. And by the way, they're going to charge you big money. Zero management fees, they're saying. They're trying to suck you in, um, but the expenses are very high. And they make money from the expenses and the management. And they'll, they'll eventually include management fees. But look, bottom line is this stuff is toxic. Okay. It's become incredibly toxic. And as an investor, you do not want to invest in private credit right now. If you had, if you had been buying private credit going back, you know, 20 years, 10 years, even five years, you've made an amazing return. It's time to get out. But today, private credit is a bubble, and you need to get out of all your private credit funds. So investors, if you're invested in private credit, be careful out there.